today we don't celebrate a man, but we celebrate a vessel. The things that God has poured out through his life has made unchangeable differences in ours. It is my prayer that his testimony and example will cause us to journey on and remain steadfast in the faith that we so ardently believe in. And if one day Grandpa should pass from this life, then may we carry on the heritage that we have been so richly blessed with. The Master Plan I complain to the Lord, have I really done my best? Has my life been for nothing? Have I fulfilled my quest? So many have done much greater, have I done anything at all? They seem so much taller, Lord, and I seem so small. When I took it to the Lord, as I've often done before, I complained a little, Lord, can I do more? To my surprise, he answered, and this is what he said. Before, when you came to me, you wasn't really dead. But now, my son, just listen. It's always been my plan to lift up my son Jesus to the very lowest man. I hung the world on nothing, and this is my desire. When you're nothing, I can use you to set the world on fire. So now, my son, you're ready to fulfill the master's plan. Now lift up your head, my son. The keys are in your hand. So this video is my present to him, and I hope he knows how thankful I am for him, and that I'm so proud to call him Grandpa. One day sought many physicians, but rather grew worse in the Bible, we're told. But when she had heard of the healings of Jesus, she found what she needed for body and soul. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch some part of his clothes Well I know I'd be healed My sins all forgiven If I can just touch him I know I'd be whole Blind Bartimaeus said by the highway side begging nobody to help him down life's weary way then jesus came by and heard his sad cry well he touched his blind eyes and he healed him that day. Clinic is none other than Reverend C. S. Optigo from West Palm Beach, Florida. And he's taking, come on, let's give him a good hand.
Thank you, Pastor Dobbs. Hallelujah. Come here. I want an old bear hug here. Glory. <laughs> Bless you. I feel a great many needs here tonight that God's going to meet. And I'm going to preach an hour's message in five minutes. Amen. Brother Welton, you better get ready tonight. We might do a little tuning up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, he's got it. <laughs> you know what it means. Now, I want to say, yeah, 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 I like that. Give me some of that. Say amen. Now, this got ice in it a little over 12 years ago. At the time that Sister Up the Grove and I had been married for 50 years, we've got 62 to our credit right now. But there's one thing I know. My eyes is not on the world. My eyes is not on finances. My eyes is not on the doctor. My eyes are on you, Lord. The devil's got some of you convinced that you're, you're nobody. You don't have anything. You'll never have anything. You'll always be oppressed, always complaining, always blaming somebody else. That's what the devil wants you to be. My children can tell you, my grandchildren, all 15 of my grandchildren can tell you. All four of my children can tell you. My wife, she's sitting right here, she can tell you. She's seen me walk through the fire. She's seen me walk through trouble. You ask her, what was Brother Upgo's attitude? He just kept on laughing, kept on praising God. Kept on worshiping God anyhow. Kept on lifting up His name. Said, God, I don't have the answer, but I know You do. My eyes are on You, Lord. And I praised Him anyhow. And finally, a 12-year-old child almost immediately took over the whole thing. The Bible says that He astounded them with His questions and His answers. <laughs> You want to know how, how old I am? Are you talking about my mother's side or my father's side? Now, if you're talking about my mother's side, I'm only 12 years old. But, sir, if you're talking about my father's side, I'm the alpha. Punch somebody on the shoulder and say, that old man's preaching this morning. Well, sir, you're astounding us with your questions. Let me ask you something. Where do you live? If you're talking about... I'm from a little town over here called Nazareth. But sir, if you're talking about my father's side, hallelujah, in my father's house, and Mother Collier laid her hand on top of my head and rebuked that devil of tuberculosis to the amazement of Dr. Weems, the county doctor in Palm Beach County. And God totally healed my lungs when I was 11 years old. Hallelujah. From 11 years old until now, I thank God I'm still preaching with these lungs. Still singing with these lungs. Still praising him with these lungs. Just to make the devil mad. Let's sing that chorus one more time and on the end, I'm going to hit the high note. Because the devil don't like that, see? He was defeated when I was 11. He's still defeated now. Those lungs were supposed to have been expelled forever. He said, I want you to give them beauty for ashes. I want you to give them the oil of joy for mourning. I want you to give them the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The world is getting sick and tired of preacherettes preaching sermonettes to Christianettes. <laughs> When I die, hallelujah, by and by, for oh, I'll fly away. Take that, devil. Woo! Glory! 
That's my testimony tonight. 